All right, we're going to tie a trout version of Jeff Hickman's fish taco in brown. And the main ingredient for this fly will be some ostrich. And I actually got this from a feather duster I got at Walmart for seven bucks. So you can get about 20, 25 uh, ostrich pieces out of there that are pretty usable. So in the vise, I've got a Waddington 25 millimeter shank. Senyo's intruder wire in size 6 or larger. And some owner side drifting hooks in size 4. We're going to start off with a, a blend of some orange ice dub and some orange angora goat. This will be kind of a hot spot in the back of the fly. And we'll mix that together. And this will be basically a ball at the back end of the fly and you'll generally want this to show through and you'll see when we get this going do a dubbing loop here a little pinch and spin and we won't pick this out we'll just let this kind of clump up and we'll wad up and we'll Tied into kind of a big, big wad at the back end here. Go ahead and tie this off. And the traditional fly that Jeff Hickman ties has kind of like a woolly bugger body or a more traditional body with a hackle going through but we're going to go ahead and just put some dubbing on for the main body and we've got some prism some SLF uh, dubbing here the color is hair's ear decent chunk of this we'll have this a little bit thinner but we're going to want to cover most of the most of the body with this and this is thinner material than ice dubbing. Another dubbing loop here. You could make this into a dubbing noodle, but it is pretty fragile material. Going to advance that thread forward. Tie this bit of dubbing in here and we'll actually lengthen it down the dubbing loop here and that'll just allow us to tie further. We'll pinch and spin. We won't pick this one out either. It's almost like a dubbing noodle there. I'll go ahead and advance that and touching turns forward. You know some of these fibers will end up holding that ostrich up but we'll make more of a distinct collar here. That'll be more of a material prop. And we'll, we'll use Angora Goat again. But this time we'll make a longer dubbing loop and tie it more like a hackle so we'll get all of our fibers evenly distributed here, make our dubbing loop. So we want a fairly thin dubbing loop and we want to pick it out so that those fibers stick up nicely for us. So we'll lengthen this down the dubbing loop here trying to thin it out a little bit so we'll thin it out maybe go a little bit longer pinch and spin and we'll go ahead and start picking this out
you have to be pretty careful with the 6 aught thread with dubbing loops it can be a little bit fragile so just take your time with it and I like to pick it out until I don't feel much resistance near the thread that's pretty good you can see that's fairly sparse and wispy we'll use this a lot like a hackle kind of fold it back and there's a little bump where I tied my wire in that we'll cover up here that should be more than enough we'll tie that in And I'll brush this Angora goat out so you'll see this will start to stick up and you'll see it kind of acting more like a sort of like a hackle underbody here. Which with this ostrich you want it to kind of ride up and be propped up so that'll be our underbody and for our ostrich we can you could tie it into a dubbing loop. I like to just pick it off into clumps and we're going to try to tie it around the fly and what we're going to do is get three or four clumps of this get all the tips lined up and tie it in so I've got my first clump of cut, cutting off about an inch of ostrich and we'll go ahead and line these tips up Yeah, it's a fair amount of material. You go just a little bit longer than the hook. And we'll go ahead and tie this in. You could cut off your butt ends. We'll just leave them in for now. We'll kind of use our thumb and splay those around a little bit lock that down. So I'll probably use about three or four groups of this ostrich here. So there's our top is fairly well covered. Rotate to the side here about the same amount and we'll repeat that process. We'll cut off about an inch, line up those tips and tie it in. And now we'll tie some on the side. We'll line it up with the top layer that we put in there. Sometimes I'll spin my bobbin to get the make that first thread wrap nice and easy. Tie it kind of loose and then we'll splay it around with our thumb here. Spread it around. This fly might only take three clumps. lock it in and cut off those tips here. Probably our last clump here. We'll do the same thing. We'll grab another about an inch, inch and a half clump here. And then we'll straighten up the, straighten out those tips and get them all lined up. All right, we'll get our, probably last little bit in here. We'll line it all up. Get it all fairly even. Couple of loose wraps and then we'll spread it around. Lock it down. 
whip out the excess. And then we can clean up the fuzzy stuff at the tip here. You can pull that back. Kind of clean it up a little bit. Any miscellaneous pieces you can trim out. And then to finish off the fly, we'll add a little hackle here. I've been using a lot of these kind of hybrid pheasant hackles that have a really good hackle, but then also some good marabou. And we'll tie that in tip first. I really like to lock that tip in, tie it backwards. And you can leave that tip in or or you could pull it out. And then we'll go ahead and fold those hackles back and wrap forward here. We'll add a little bit of that marabou in there. And then we can tie it off. Alright, you can finish the head of your fly here and go ahead and whip finish it and use your glue or cement of choice here and go ahead and brush this fly out so you can kind of see the full profile it's kind of a mini version of Jeff Hickman's fish taco for trout and brown. Really lightweight, not a whole lot of not a whole lot of materials, easy to cast, and you'll be able to see that kind of orange kind of hot section underneath as it swims. And then we have a kind of a trout spay version of Jeff Hickman's fish taco. Thanks for watching.